all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back and as you can see for today we have the maintenance notice and the update details for the november update and things are actually quite interesting more interesting than i thought they were going to be for this update frankly after seeing the live stream however it's still not as i would say good as i was hoping for because we don't get any new world bosses no giant boss raid nothing and i think with the celestials and the eternals we could have definitely seen a new world boss like with crow come on man like really an eternal deviant showdown in world boss legend that would be so dope man so this was a missed opportunity hopefully maybe in the next update or at least by the end of the year we could see something we have like what maybe two mid-month patches left for the end of the year yeah, because I don't think we're going to get a full-on update for December. Usually, that's not how it works. My guess is we're going to get something for Hawkeye and then maybe a Christmas slash holiday update with some uniforms and whatnot. So, this might be the last full update of the year. But you never know. mid month patches have been big lately. So, something big could come by the end of the year. Either way, let's dive into this one. So, we have Tier 3 Tina coming in. We're also getting three new uniforms, Gilgamesh and Kingo getting transcended. And then we also have two CTPs that can now be reforged, Destruction and Greed. Looking forward to Destruction because it's basically a useless CTP at this point. It's pretty much just a glorified obelisk. So it kind of feels bad when you get it. So should be interesting to see what they do for it. And then obviously we have the Future Pass coming back and then a new uniform collection. There's some game fixes and stuff. And just keep in mind, guys, the game will be unavailable for about eight hours today. So it's going down at 3 p.m. PST. That's about 6 p.m. EST. And then it's going to be back up at 11 p.m. PST, which is about 2 a.m. EST. So do as much as you can after reset today so that you don't have to try and cram everything in last minute after the game comes back up. Because you never know with these guys. Maintenance could be running as long as maybe 5 a.m if something goes wrong because they're adding in the rest of the epic quest and whatnot and they're also putting in a new piece of content which is the dimension rift so you never know things could take them longer and there could be bugs and whatnot and you don't want to miss out on your daily rewards okay that could get really messy anyways let's jump into the update details and let's see what these new characters have to offer so first and foremost we have thena she's gonna be the ultimate prize you have to complete the entirety of the epic quest buy two deluxe packages and tier three slash transcend two characters before you can actually get her she's essentially the doctor doom the gene gray the strife whatever you want to call her she's the end gold the ultimate prize okay so let's see what she offers her leadership increases allies all allies not just eternals increases their basic attack and defense by 50 and 20 percent that's actually pretty good her victory cry increases crit rate crit damage by 20 and 25 percent and then she increases additional pierce for herself not for her allies by five percent so this is actually really really good for those of you guys who don't have any pierce on your cards this character is going to help you a lot she's basically kind of like null if you will if you guys remember when Null first came out because nobody had Pierce, right? Or not too many people had a lot of Pierce. Null felt like a god. But as you get more and more Pierce, you notice he wasn't as good anymore. So if I had to guess, Thena is going to be very, very useful for people who don't have a lot of Pierce on their cards. When you do get a lot of Pierce though, will she still be powerful? I have no idea, but I will be getting her as soon as possible and we will be testing her. On the free to play account, it's gonna take me a long ass time to get this character because for this deluxe package, you need to spend over 8,000 crystals and that is a whole lot, man. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, so right here for her passive or tier two passive, she increases guaranteed critical rate by 20%. And if you see this, generally it means that they want you to run the character with a ctp of rage and looking at her skills on stream it looks like rage is going to be best for her but since you can't reforge rage yet they're leaving rage for last you probably want to run this character with energy to get the most out of her in world boss legend because i don't see very much pvp value here her skills uh, 
it just looks like she's supposed to be used in pve okay paralysis defense down bleed burn invincibility 10 percent attack buff is kind of like whatever to be honest that's very very low and if 10 no th there's no way this is 10 percent at level six right this has to be shown at level one i've never seen them give a buff so low as like 10 percent all the time well actually that's not true didn't they put 10 percent on luna snows okay maybe they're trying something new here let's see so gilgamesh his leadership is gonna give you 50 percent defense you can get him from what is this the uh, faith of mankind epic quest so you're gonna get him at like one star all of these guys come at one star in the uh, epic quest you can't get them from bio selectors so do keep that in mind it's not like cersei where you could just play shadowland and unlock her and then tier two ticket her and all that stuff you have to play the epic quest to get all of these guys okay so his passive gives him super armor and defense passively and then on top of that he heals when his hp is below 99 percent so kind of like wolverine that's kind of cool especially since the way how his skills play out he's going to be exposed to take a lot of damage and he has these long skills that are not iframes so we got stun here moving on we have invincibility he has damage accumulation it's based on okay because based on damage dealt strange i thought oh no no with the uniform it changes to damage taken i was gonna say i thought it was damage taken on stream but we'll see we'll see when the uniform pops up here so increases all attack by 30 percent crit rate by 20 percent that's pretty good love to see crit rate because the other eternals like icarus cersei Makari, they don't get crit rate now moving on we have kingo his leadership is pretty useless same as gilgamesh however his passive is quite good 20% attack and 35% ignore dodge. That's dope. Skill damage, bonus damage for the tier two. That's cool. First skill. Okay, so he's an energy based speed type. Interesting. What is Thena? Thena should be physical, right? Let's get physical. Physical. Yeah, she is physical. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Based on her attacks, it looked like she was physical, so I just wanted to confirm there, but he's an energy-based speed type. Interesting. All right, so he has damage accumulation. This is damage dealt. It's 1%, and the duration is 8 seconds, and the cooldown is 15. Okay, so that's not bad. He can keep it up pretty much all the time. Okay. Gilgamesh, what's your duration, my guy? four seconds 12 second cooldown that is terrible that's actually terrible wow okay i seen that on stream i just wanted to confirm it they are serious about that wowzers okay so my guy here might actually be really good just because his accumulation lasts for pretty much the entire time you're using him 50 percent attack and then what is this this is paralysis defense down penetration he gives himself attacking crit rate that's dope immunity as well he doesn't heal though he doesn't heal so that's kind of a bummer remember what i said all the time guys remember what i say all the time when a character doesn't heal their potential for war boss legend after stage 20 it dips a lot so all these uniforms will be on sale for 50% off ahead of the Black Friday sale. So you don't have to wait for Black Friday to buy these uniforms. That's good on them. All right. So it's going to be eight, eight seventy five. Let's see. So, all right. So uniform effect increases chain hit damage by 10% when attacking immunity to guard break. Okay. So basically because this character is a rage character or ideally you want to use her with a rage because of how her skills play out it's going to be very difficult to proc effectively with an energy or in regular obelisk they're giving her chain hit on her uniform which is really good so she could potentially be like loki where loki is really really strong in world boss legend or dr doom for that matter where he's really really strong in world boss legend even if you give him a cdp of rage okay she doesn't have any ignore dodge though 
so that could prove to be a problem for her at least i didn't see any now with the uniform she actually gets damage accumulation it is 0.6 so not as high as makari but it does last for 10 seconds and it has a 14 second cooldown so basically cut that in half that's seven seconds and a 10 second duration that's really good then right here we have invincibility we got a crit rate and all attack that's good uniform actually looks like it could do a lot for her now let's take a look at gilgamesh this is interesting so this guy gives himself more defense then he decreases chain hit damage taken when he's attacked so that's pretty good and then he decreases physical damage received from reflect effect basically this guy is supposed to counter luke cage in like i guess alliance conquest because um most people don't use luke cage in timeline and i don't really see him as a timeline meta character but it'll be interesting to see if he can actually counter luke cage like luke cage is a monster he's actually a monster so i don't know maybe he'll be able to do it his heal gets bumped up from four percent to six percent so that's good and then he can remove debuffs from himself he gets invincibility his accumulation gets changed from damage dealt to damage taken which honestly kind of sucks i prefer damage dealt instead of damage taken because this is a retaliation play kind of uh accumulation so it kind of slows you down whereas you could be more offensive more aggressive you have to kind of do the wait and see take attacks to do more damage kind of approach is six seconds with a 13 second cooldown so basically every six and a half seconds you can put this up it's better it is better than what it was previously without the uniform but i would ideally like this to be like eight seconds so that it's pretty much up all the time especially since it's one of those ones where you have to wait and see time it perfectly and all that good stuff however he does give himself a big heal right here 35 percent every um what is this every seven seconds that's pretty good he has penetration he increases basic attack by 120 percent for seven seconds which is massive i've never seen an attack buff this big on a fifth skill before i think we've seen this once on a tier three i believe it was for molecule man yeah i think molecule man has a big attack buff that's over 100 percent or close to something like that on his tier three so this is a massive attack buff plus there's a proc here for one attack interesting he could be a beast for pve because his accumulation can be kept up almost all the time and then if you have this buff which you can keep up all the time because it's seven seconds 14 second cooldown you cut that in half so it's literally up all the time that that's gonna be crazy like he could do really good damage or he could be like molecule man where he does like no damage <laughs> so will be interesting to see so we have kingo coming in he's getting five new skill changes also his uniform is 50 percent off just like the other ones his uniform bonus is whenever he uses his fifth skill it resets his two skill so you can kind of spam it but that might make it so you have to use him with rage if you're spamming the skill we'll have to wait and see he has paralysis he can actually heal that's good he can heal but it's six percent once no 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 six percent every nine seconds that's kind of yikes bro it's only six percent wow that's a really bad heal it's better than not having a heal but it's not really the greatest this needed to be like at least uh 15 20 percent like this is mad low usually they give characters 15 percent maybe this is gonna repeat itself multiple times so maybe it says six percent for one second but maybe it just keeps healing him for maybe three or four seconds you know you never know look at moonstone moonstone heals like five ten times when you pop her uh what is it her third skill even though it doesn't state that initially so we'll see what happens there um his damage accumulation he goes from being able to keep it up all the time to being just off by one second so it's eight seconds and a nine second cooldown versus you can see right here the cooldown on the skill was shorter so it was uh seven and a half seconds 
and an eight second cooldown off by a little bit but it's not the biggest deal okay so on his forge skill he has ignore dodge and an all attack buff by 40 percent for five seconds six second cooldown that's not that bad would have been nicer if you could keep it up all the time though it is what it is and then he has a crit rate buff 30 percent and an attack buff by 30 percent that's pretty good okay let's see what's going on with thena's tier three here so tier three doesn't look like anything to write home about it's just bleed burn paralysis penetration invincibility and an attack proc we already seen that on stream it looks really cool let's move on so right here just basically a typical awaken skill with a 40 percent recovery for gilgamesh and what is it he gets paralysis and actually he doesn't get anything unique they just basically took away the heal from him and then just gave him the yeah the standard transcended skill ah, that's that's kind of lame okay so this is basically just the um the epic quest update this is now what it's gonna look like you basically have to complete all of these if you want to get the queen a dance with doom <laughs> imagine imagine you see Thena and doom dancing together that would be crazy anyways moving on so you acquire them at one star like i said previously you can't get these guys from bio selectors and then you have to buy gilgamesh for 4400 crystals or 29 dollars us so if you want to get thena you're gonna have to buy two deluxe packages guys do keep that in mind okay and she comes at one star and then you level her up to tier three through the quest so yikes gonna be really expensive really really expensive anyways moving on down here they show you that um kingo will be transcended when you finish the quest gilgamesh will be at tier two and thena will be at tier three so you have to complete the quest in its entirety you can't just unlock them and then use tickets to cheat the system well, it was not really cheating it's just like paying to, to get ahead no you can't really do that you have to go through the thing so let's talk about this dimension rift thing because this is really interesting dimension rift was a thing that was in the game back in 2015 to i believe 2018 they took it out and they put in the new dimension missions where you get tokens and then you can buy stuff from the shop however they're bringing it back and they're changing how it works and they're using it as a way for people to farm artifacts for free i personally don't mind that because artifact grinding is kind of a pain right now and i'm not the biggest fan of the system to be honest with you guys even though there's some cool artifacts like wolverine cersei and icarus i guess is kind of okay but makari is a beast with her artifact so some of the artifacts are good most of them are bad sharon rogers she has a really terrible one in case you guys are wondering but you can get hers i guess from mythic for farming you have a chance of getting it now interestingly enough on the stream they were running normal and it was using energy but as you can see right here from this screenshot it is using these uh rift tokens dimensional tokens whatever they want to call them that you get when you beat the stage so as you progress it's going to start giving you these tokens and then you're going to need to use them to play other stages so i guess you won't be able to just do mythic all the time if you don't have the tokens that's kind of good and bad like not using energy is good because there's so many things in the game that already use a lot of energy so getting these token things and then using that instead is fine and also you can only run these things a max of three times per day you can open one yourself and you can join two from your friends and you'll be able to join through this lobby right here so down here they tell you that dimension rifts have grades from normal to mythic and you can collect these rift summon stones from your reward pool and you can actually combine them by dismantling materials and i'm guessing by combining them is how you get to mythical because right here in the reward pool it actually doesn't show you that red mythical stone it just shows you the legendary the heroic the rare the uh advanced and the normal so more than likely there's going to be an rng factor there or maybe you could just combine it all the way up to six star and you don't fail who knows but right here it does show you material fusion um the fact that they cost gold just kind of sucks because again that's another thing that's going to be depleting your gold count but it is what it is gold is actually not that hard to come by 
even if you're free to play but because there's so many things to spend gold on i don't need another thing to spend gold on you feel me so that kind of a is a bum deal but you can see right here the redstone you can combine up and get that so just like abx there is a timer and this thing resets every single day there's seven different rounds basically seven of the story missions that's in the game they're gonna take and they're gonna put in this thing and it's gonna drop you mvp rewards which is basically celestial essence artifacts and progression boxes and the progression boxes will have a chance of dropping you some rewards let's go down here and see so we have the kingpin here and let me see if i can show you the so basically these are all the artifacts from the different rounds um captain america it's a decent artifact shang chi it's a decent decent artifact white fox is a decent artifact but the rest is just kind of mid in my opinion um that's kind of a bummer maybe in the future they'll rotate even more artifacts in here but for now all of these are just kind of mid to be honest with you because even though white fox is artifact heals her nobody really uses white fox as a dps most of the time she's in the fight i would say 99 percent of the time white fox is on your team she's not on the field so even though her artifact is pretty good for her it's kind of mid because you're not using it so from clearing the stages if you get lucky you can get a three or four star exclusive passive skill artifact which is pretty good but how often are you gonna get one it's beyond me and the fact that you cannot upgrade the artifacts from four star to five star from five star to six star kind of sucks in my opinion because if you get two three stars of the same variety like what are you gonna do with them you can only put it on the character once so like the other one what do you do you dismantle it and then you keep fishing for the other ones it's just i don't know I feel like they should make this system where you can actually upgrade these things, but they kind of want to make it so you have to gamble. So for now, they're making it so you cannot upgrade the three star variant to the six star. Kind of stupid because everything else in the game, you can upgrade from one star to six star. So I don't understand why they're doing this for artifacts. Well, not everything because Odin's blessings, you can only get as Odin's blessings, right? But all the other things that have like a star variant that starts off at one star your character your comic cards your urus your custom gear all them stuff you can upgrade from one star to six stars so it's kind of a bummer that they still haven't made it so you can upgrade these things from three stars to six stars but it is what it is it's only a matter of time i guess how much time we'll have to wait and see anyways so there's an improvement coming to the artifact system so now you can re-roll the uh substat on your artifact so let's say you get this one and it says increases instinct dodge by four percent and you say okay don't really care for that i wanted to say increase instinct crit rate cool you can re-roll that but you will need to use an artifact of the exact same grade to re-roll it so if it's a three star you need another three star it doesn't have to be the exact same one if it's a four star you need a four star if it's a five star you need a five star if it's a six star which are extremely rare you're gonna need a six star i don't think you should do it for six stars personally i think whatever you get you should just keep it because you don't want to be using a six star for another character to re-roll it for whatever character it is because you never know that might be your one and only chance of getting that six star and maybe later on that character becomes meta keep in mind though these things are super hard to come by right now so i would not be using um unless you have a bunch of dupes i would not be using anything above like four or five star to reroll for now just like sit on them because you never know if they do make it so that you can combine two stars three star four star and five stars to upgrade like comic cards and custom gear in the future they might make it so you need to have the exact same ones right so do keep that in mind you might need dupes later on so if you get dupes and you're thinking yeah i'm gonna use those dupes to re-roll for whoever because i like them more at the moment might not be the wisest idea okay if you get any dupes hold on to it because as people I guess um hold out on investing in the system they might make the system more appealing and one of the ways of making it more appealing might be making it so that if you get dupes of like whatever kind you can combine them and get a higher star or grade for your artifact anyways moving on because that's what's stopping me from investing in the system personally i think the uh because like i said i think the inability to 
upgrade my artifact from a lower star level to a higher star level is kind of stupid anyways agents can now distinguish enhanced effects and exclusive passive skills when dismantling artifacts so you can basically select artifacts with exclusive skills or you can select ones that have an enhanced ability for now if it has an exclusive skill or a passive or whatnot i would not dismantle it i would put it on whichever character it is because even if it only offers a fraction of a damage increase you should put it there or a little bit of survivability it might not be the best but it's better than nothing so just put it there for now do not dismantle it because you never know they could go back and they could rework what the passive ability does anyways moving on so let's take a look at what Thena, Gilgamesh, and Kingo's artifact does. For Thena, it gives her ignore dodge, which is really good. Really, really good. Because like I said, the character, her play style seems to be fitting of her CTP of Rage. And what is missing from the CTP of Rage? Well, chain hit damage and ignore dodge. And guess what? Her artifact is giving her ignore dodge and her uniform is giving her chain hit damage everything you need everything you are missing from a ctp of rage see again this artifact system is actually very interesting i'll tell you that moving on so for gilgamesh it is giving him wow a whopping 80 percent hp recovery making him even more of a tank and it increases his max hp by 75 percent that is crazy wow they're really trying to make this guy into a pvp monster eh? maybe he might have some potential i don't know because of the reflect for for ac at least with this artifact he might actually be really good but i don't know about timeline battle anyways this guy he increases the basic damage dealt to enemies with 50% HP. Oh, wow. So if they have over 50% HP, he does more damage. Or if they get low on HP, like below 25%, he does more damage. Interesting. So it works both ways. When they're high on HP, he does more damage. And when they're low on HP, about to die, he does more damage. So it's actually pretty cool. So this right here is actually pretty interesting, guys. It says the color of the option text will now be distinguished when the instinct option of the exclusive artifact is the main instinct of the hero. So basically when you have the correct instinct for the character, it will turn now pink or purple versus if you look right here, Gilgamesh, it has justice and what we have here for Kingo is destruction. It's not purple, which means you should probably re-roll it so it becomes purple. That's basically what it is. When you get purple, you know you have the correct one. Um, it's just another level of RNG to uh, make more money. It's just what it is. Honestly, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think the uh, instinct does that much yet. But who's to say it won't have an impact later anyways moving on we have ctp reforging and there's two new abilities coming in strike and ambush so you're going to be able to jump people now anyways the gauge charges up when moving and strike will be activated when using a skill after the gauge has been fully charged strike grants ignore dodge when activated and damage delta boss type increase okay so the ctp of destruction that we have sitting in our inventory right now might actually be useful now guys let me actually pull this up so right here it says increases damage delta boss type by 200 percent or you can get all attack increase by up to 32 percent if it's a brilliant okay let's see right here what ambush does the gaze charges up when being hit i wish it was when attacking but whatever because greed isn't really a defensive uh, ctp and ambush will be activated when being hit after the gauge has been fully charged ambush grants immunity to damage reflect wow okay this is interesting immunity to damage reflect and ignores damage decrease let's see what is going on here so ignores enemies damage decrease by 70 percent wow okay the ignore dodge goes up to 51 percent wow this is the big thing here grants immunity to damage reflect 
So basically Silver Surfer gets countered by this, Luke Cage gets countered by this, Colossus gets countered by this. That's actually pretty OP if you think about it. Silver Surfer gets hit by this pretty hard. The immunity to damage reflect is actually a big deal because a lot of times Silver Surfer's primary way of killing you is by reflecting damage in your face until you die. Okay, so greed and destruction, two interesting power-ups. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section. I'll definitely be reforging a couple of destructions. I don't have that many greeds chilling around, so I might have to gamble and get a couple to see how it works, but it looks pretty interesting. Now for the future pass, obviously there's no character being given out for free this month because of the fact that they are all epic quest characters and you have to unlock them through the epic quest. It is what it is. However, we have some new icons coming in. We have one for Thena and this one is probably just going to be in the store. The token shop that comes around in the middle of the month so you will have the option of choosing Thena if you want to simp for her or choosing a premium card or a ctp obviously you should choose a premium card or a ctp but do whatever you want to do i'm not your parent um quicksilver looks kind of goofy here i'm not even gonna lie like it, it's cool seeing him running and whatnot but the way how he's like i don't know shifting his hips and stuff <laughs> it looks kind of goofy also, Gwenpool is doing her typical thing, being Gwenpool. It's cute. Anyways, moving on. Uh, uniform collection. Timeline survival. They're making some changes. Basically, they're making it so that when you purchase a buff, you can actually see it in the shop. Cool. And they're also adding in some artifacts that now can be purchased for survival tokens. Because if you've been playing it, you'll rack up a bunch of tokens and you have nothing really to spend it on. So that's cool but personally i don't play timeline survival that much they're combining the um the damage numbers for your basic damage and your instinct damage into one if you want it to be more visually pleasing so that's the thing you can make it so it just shows the total instead of the blue numbers and the regular numbers you can just make it so it shows the total number i'll probably switch over to total you know but it is what it is if you're investing in instinct and artifacts and all that stuff you probably want it to be individual so you can see how much of a damage increase you're getting from all that stuff let me know what you guys think i make content on the game so obviously maybe it would be more beneficial to you guys for me to keep it individually but it is what it is we'll see what you guys prefer all right so the timeline survival ui and movement animation has been improved the difficulty of shang chi's legendary battle has been lowered crescent second skill has been improved and then down here there's a couple game fixes and one of which i do want to point out because i made a video about it what like three four maybe five days ago so right here they're talking about there's an issue with war machines third skill where his damage accumulation all attack buff that he gets it's now showing 11 percent instead of 13 percent they're saying this was worded wrongly and it's being applied wrongly they're gonna change it change it back to what i have no idea i don't know if they're gonna take it from what it currently is back to what it was we'll have to wait and see okay anyways there's an issue with thor the supporter so in the, the null world boss legend fight thor can come out to help you kill null and thor is supposed to be able to attack null null gets stunned and then you do your thing however apparently null can kill thor i've never seen that happen that would be hilarious well actually no because if thor dies then Null just kills you and you cannot stun him. So yeah, that would be a massive waste of time. Anyways, so this is interesting because I always had a feeling that this was kind of off. So for Speed Superhero Day, it always felt like the Frost Beast had less dodge because you could get a really high score with Luna Snow by not even canceling the roar. You could get up to like 9, 10 million if you have enough attack on your cards. And apparently that was the case. The dodge on round seven, which is the Speed Superhero Day, which was yesterday you can actually score more because the dodge rate was lower so now they're making it so that it's the same so your scores might decrease if you were not canceling the roar so do keep that in mind okay there's an issue with heroes stopping when entering the barrier while being hit okay so this is against um thanos in uh the ultimate story mode 
Okay, cool. So guys, leave me your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about the patch overall? I think it's actually much better than it initially seemed. Personally, I'm gonna reserve my final judgment on this piece of content until I am able to play it for at least a week. So let me know what you guys think overall though, and I will catch you guys in the next one. I know this is a very expensive update coming in with another deluxe package and three new uniforms. It's just yikes, man. But it is what it is. That's where we're at right now in Marvel Future Fight. And uh, we just have to roll with the punches. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.